Todd in these shadows here, Internet's laziest music nerd, coming late to the conversation yet again. We're all familiar with the concept of overplay, right? You like a song, but then you hear it too often in too short amount of time, and it gets tired more quickly than it should, and you stop wanting to hear it. You know, th that was more of a thing before streaming, and people had less control over what they listened to. But here's my question. Can a song be over-talked? I'm gonna take my horse to the old town road, I'm gonna... Maybe this is a problem just for me, because I have to keep up with current discussions in music to make these videos, and also I just never leave my computer, but... I have seen nothing in the last month but takes upon takes upon takes about Old Town Road by Lil Nas X, which is the number one song in America as I record this. But it's not just a song. No, no, no. It is pure think piece bait. Arguments. Counter arguments. Counter counter arguments. Controversy. The discourse. You would think it was titled Old Town Road Parentheses What We Talk About When We Talk About Country and Rap and Historical Racist Exclusion in the Music Industry and the Concept of Genre as a Whole. And it's not just that either. It's a social movement. Old Town Road has become a symbol of righteousness striking back against every historical wrong committed against black artists in any genre. And I'm just exhausted by it. Like, I figured by the time I recorded my take, things would calm down. Uh, and it has not. Just a week ago, the rapper Dave East said Old Town Road was, quote, whack. Shit is whack with a cape on it. And then he had to turn off his Instagram comments because he was getting so much backlash. Because he called it whack. Sure makes me nervous about making this video. Like the last time I remember being this nervous because a song had such fervent, devoted fans was Childish Gambino's This Is America. This is America. But This Is America was provocative by design. It was a firebomb deliberately aimed at an already overheated and volatile political climate, and it demanded that you take it seriously. Old Town Road is a less than two minute novelty song about riding a horse. This song was not built to carry that weight. You have overladen that horse. But who am I to judge about over talking a song? I'm making a video too. I mean, what else is going down? I don't have 10 minutes of material on the Jonas Brothers. I don't. And I've been thinking about the intersection of country and hip-hop for a very, very long time. Like, way before even Nelly and Tim McGraw. I mean, back when country and rap were considered exact opposites, and you would hear people commonly say they listened to everything except those two genres. Now, I was a little kid in the 90s when my parents took me to a Hank Williams Jr. concert and I watched him do a cover of Whoop There Is. I swear that happened. And, you know, it sucked because old Hank was too drunk to stand, but it still blew my mind because, what? Country and rap don't go together. And on the basis of that concert, I declare Hank Jr. the most influential country singer alive. Because now, country and hip-hop mix so often, it's not even noteworthy anymore. But it's mostly come from the countryside. They add hip-hop tropes to country songs, they get guest rappers. There hasn't really been much of the reverse. And then, this 19-year-old kid, who's a complete no-name. In fact, his name is literally just a mashup of the biggest rappers of 20 years ago. He could have been named Jay Ludabiggy. So this no-name, with a bad name, he comes out of nowhere with what he calls a country trap song. I mean, it is a trap song, but it's got a country hook sung in a low southern bass with lyrics about, you know, bull riding and horses. He doesn't even have a real music video, it's just stolen video game footage. That's how small time he is. But his song catches on as a meme on TikTok, which I'm told is what replaced Vine and then it gets big enough to start charting. And then Billboard decided, wait, this is not actually a country song, and they took it off. And that's where the trouble started. There's just been this huge backlash at Billboard's decision and the country music establishment as a whole. That decision became emblematic of country music's long historical exclusion of black artists. And there have been these big long Twitter threads about it, and they're not super accurate. But the broader points are true as far as I can tell. Like, there's no reason that country music should be only for white people. Certainly not historically, since it and the blues come from roughly the same place. 
No, country music became exclusively white as a marketing decision in the record industry 80 years ago. So as to the broader points, you know, is there racist resistance to black people in country music by country music fans and by the industry? Yeah, obviously so. I know that because every black guy who's ever tried to make it in Nashville has said as much, old and new, successful and not. So yeah, there are problems. Like even now that they have like three black guys, which has brought the number of successful black artists in country history up to what, four? I just had difficulty connecting it to Old Town Road. Because honestly, I sided with Billboard. Ain't nobody tell me nothing. To me, this is not a country song. Like, yeah, there are like cowboy elements, and modern country has hip hop elements, but you still wouldn't mistake this for any other country song. Even beyond the beat, it just doesn't sound the same. Like, the melodies and the structure are mostly trap. The song was only counted as country because his manager checked the box when he uploaded it to Spotify because he figured, why not? And I have seen critics in both the country and hip hop worlds agree with me on that, so, you know, at least I'm not alone. But I'm actually not so confident in this argument anymore. In fact, I think the other side's argument is pretty unbeatable, which is that country music already includes tons of non-country music. Girl, when you want it, you know that I'm on it. You know like, I'm not even talking about bro country or pop country. I'm talking about shit that is just plainly not country music in any way. How on earth could you call this country music? You can't. It has no elements of the genre whatsoever, and yet it was a huge hit on the country charts. Old Town Road may or may not be a country song. It's certainly more country than this. But even just compared to an average, modern, pop country song, where's, where's my argument? Old Town Road isn't country. It has creaky banjos and trap beats. Modern country music has processed guitars and snap beats. You know, I'm just listening to myself. I feel like an idiot. Like, yes, modern genres have been shaped by a lot of historical racism, and that's obviously still a problem. But I think there's a secondary problem, which is that Billboard wrote itself into a corner by still trying to define genres at all. Genre is an artifact of a time when music cost money, and people had finite amounts of cash and needed guidelines to help them decide where to spend it. It has nothing to do with the current music scene, where rock is country, country is pop, Pop is indie, and rap is somehow not pop despite being more popular than everything else. These genres have no definition anymore. And it used to be that if it was unclear, you could identify a song's genre by what radio stations it was on. But the radio stations only play like five songs now and no one listens to them. So what is their definition exactly? One of the reasons the Billboard gave for their decision was the marketing. And that they'd change their mind if the marketing changed. If the marketing changes? The music wouldn't change. Basically, the only way you can tell a song is country is if it's marketed to country radio. I still don't think Old Town Road is much of a country song, but I understand it was and is getting played on country stations, so by definition, it is a country song. Billboard hadn't changed their minds or anything, so yeah, okay, yeah, now I'm convinced. That is some horse shit. We got horse shit in the back. But even after I was convinced that Billboard fucked all this up, I don't know. I kept hearing arguments that I didn't agree with and just kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Feels like a lot of separate, unrelated issues are being conflated here. You know, I've heard people say that, you know, Billboard's exclusion of Old Town Road is, is country music saying, well, we can borrow from hip hop, but you can't borrow from country music. Yeah, that's not the same thing. The Florida Georgia Line aren't trying to be counted on the rap charts. No one's trying to get Luke Bryan played on Hot 97 next to Meek Mill. I mean, that'd be pretty funny if you tried, but, you know, that's not happening. Like, people are like, well, this just proves Nashville's biased against rappers. Have you been watching Nashville? They've been desperately courting hip hop for years now. Just begging any famous rapper, just, you know, please, please think we're cool. I mean, I just couldn't get on board with a lot of the arguments and it really detracted from the song to me. And it got much worse when they released the remix with Billy Ray Cyrus of all goddamn people. And suddenly I was hearing about how great it was that country legend Billy Ray Cyrus was using his decades of experience in Nashville and his credibility to support this wronged up-and-coming artist. What a gracious thing for him to do. I can't, I can't tell if you guys are being serious. You know he's a joke, right? He doesn't have credibility. 
He's the Rico Suave of country. He was a pop doofus who got big 25 years ago and immediately flamed out. He's not graciously standing up for this kid. He was asked to be on the song, probably because Lil Nas grew up on Hannah Montana and that's the only country singer he knows. And of course Billy Ray said yes. He's been trying to ride back to relevance on the coattails of younger, cooler artists for 15 years. This is like if a young country artist decided he was going to be a rapper. And for cred, he joined up with his favorite rapper ever, Ja Rule. You know, as if Ja Rule would care what genre it really was or who was asking. Was he going to say no? So that's who Billy Ray is in this question. Don't get that twisted. The kid's doing him a favor, just as much as the reverse. But putting that aside, obviously Old Town Road is getting screwed over. The country establishment has been trying to make a cross-genre smash like this for years. They should be loving it. And I think the resistance isn't because he's too black or it's too hip-hop. It's because Lil Nas X comes from outside their little ecosystem. Country stars only get away with genre bending if they're established country artists. And Lil Nas X isn't a country artist because he goes by a rap name and he hadn't kissed the right asses and used their songwriters and let them pick out his wardrobe. It's stupid and it's arbitrary. But at the same time, I don't think the traditionalist argument against Old Town Road is unfair. Lil Nas X is an outsider and he's not super respectful of the conventions of the genre. Instead of Old Town Road being included, maybe all the crossover shit should be excluded. Trying to mix with hip hop has made country music suck ass. And the breakdown of genre lines is why everything sounds like the same imagined dragon featureless glop. Or maybe the existence of genres is what's ruining genre music. Maybe still having separate genres in a Spotify world invites artists to try and hit all the demographics and check all the boxes instead of doing one thing well. Maybe we should give up on genres entirely instead of twisting ourselves in knots trying to draw imaginary lines and definitions. And wasn't there a song I was supposed to be reviewing? Again, this is maybe my problem as a guy that overthinks everything, but it's hard for me to even listen to this as a song because all I hear is arguments. It's like, you know, just like no one can enjoy Ghostbusters anymore. Like, I have to shove all this shit out of my head before I can listen to the song. But for real, shoving all of that aside, is it any good? Cowboy hat from Gucci, Wrangler on my booty. Can't well, it's... Look, it's a meme song, like Harlem Shake was, or Nasty Freestyle. And you know, part of me is just always gonna think that that doesn't count. Like, that's not a real song, it's a background template for a joke. You don't listen to it to listen to it, that's, that's like saying a ringtone is a hit song, or the nationwide jingle. Yeah, 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 I know, I know. Speaking of clinging to outdated definitions, I mean, Black Beatles was a meme hit, and that was obviously a real song. Like, there's a real way to become popular anyway. Like, you go back to the original viral internet meme rap song. Soulja Boy, I'm in it. Oh. Fucking Soldier Boy. If I had been reviewing music back in 2007, I'd have called it the worst song of the year, and I'd have gotten no pushback. I mean, this is barely even music, right? Everyone would have agreed. But you know, I was at an event a few weeks ago, and the DJ threw on Soldier Boy, and you know what? Everyone immediately started cranking that soldier boy, including me. So who won that argument? Who was vindicated by history? Not me. Todd, zero. Soldier boy, a billion. So I'm trying to keep an open mind. And people obviously do like Old Town Road. However they got there, people are obviously enjoying the song as a song. And I'll admit that hook is pretty solid and, you know, much better than most country songs these days. And I like Lil Nas' explanation for it too, you know, about how the Old Town Road is his way of saying, you know, he's going off the beaten path. Carving out your own way. I mean, he's sure doing that because I've never heard a song like this before. The verses though, I don't know. My life is a movie, bull riding and I don't know, man. Bull riding and boobies. You know, Lil Nas X says just because he has some funny lines in there doesn't mean he's treating country music as a joke. Well, he can say that. But these lyrics are just plain bad. It's not even a, just a couple juvenile word choices. When we say rap and country have a lot in common, that's that's in the negative way too. But so much of the time, when I'm listening to either genre, I just feel like I'm hearing lists. Lists of things. Who came and poured it? The seasons all white come and snorted. Green Lamborghini, your tortoise. Just a bunch of lazily rattled off lifestyle signifiers that I've heard a billion times before. 
You know, in the rap songs, it's brands and luxury items and whatever they're drinking. Little hat down, little John Deere. Or on the country stations, it's a bunch of random Americana symbols and whatever they're drinking. I swear, we're this close to just rewriting We Didn't Start the Fire. Lamborghinis, John Deere, Maserati's cold beer. Riding on a tractor, lean all in my blood. I mean, I guess it's kind of novel that they flip it around so that the rapper's listing off the cowboy shit, like bull riding and horses, and Billy Ray's the one listing off the brands. It's got a habit, diamond rings, and Fendi sports bras. Riding down Rodeo in my Maserati sports car. But I don't really want to hear any of that from anybody. You know, bull riding and boobies, Fendi sports bras. I don't think either of them do it particularly well. And then we get to the end of Billy Ray Cyrus' verse, and for me, that's the kicker of the entire song. Just listen to this. Got no stress, I've been through all that. I'm like a Marlboro man, so I keep going back. Wish I could roll home back to that old town road. I wanna ride till I can't go. Yeah, I'm gonna take my... <sighs> so this song is really good, and I like it a lot. I got the horses in the back. I probably could have saved myself a lot of nasty comments if I said that right at the beginning, but I went on a journey with this song. Like, I wasn't feeling it at all. And then they dropped the remix, and I still wasn't feeling it, and then they got to the Marlboro Man line, and something magic happened, and everything clicked. I mean, it felt finished, for one thing, now that it's past the two-minute mark. More balanced, I guess? Like, it was missing something, and then Billy Ray showed up, and it was finally done. And I guess this part's not so weird, because... Country is one of the few genres where you can get better with age, but how the hell does the achy breaky guy suddenly have grit and dignity? When did that happen? Like, what's next? Is the next big reggaeton star gonna be Snow? Like, that What universe am I living in? I saw some people say it's actually more country than modern country. That made me roll my eyes a little. Like, what they mean by that is that Mixing trap with country makes it kind of sound like 70s outlaw country, which is the only kind of country that's cool to like. But I mean, yeah, it is kind of like that. Can't nobody tell me nothing. It's got that same don't give a fuck attitude, not just in the song, but in making the song. Lil Nas X should be a joke who's ignorantly futzing around a genre he knows nothing about. And he pulled it off. And this should be Billy Ray's most embarrassing sellout in a long career of selling out. But he works. I mean, it's way better than Nelly and Tim McGraw. Nelly's over and over really was the forerunner to the modern bland mono genre. Old Town Road actually keeps the flavor of country and hip hop. Like it's doing a lot of the worst things about country and rap and I still don't think the lyrics are very good, but it somehow kind of has the best parts too. I, I don't know, this is a weird song. And I, you know, I don't know if I'm still gonna feel like this at the end of the year. I kind of worry this is gonna be like any overblown craze, like the Macarena or, you know, Achy Breaky Heart, where we step back after a year and go, wait, what the fuck were we doing? But I don't know, maybe it's the opposite. Lil Nas X has said he was trying to create a new genre. Maybe it's the start of a bold new trend where we mix country and hip hop and it finally doesn't suck. I don't know. Either way, I'm on board. Yeehaw. Got horses in the bag. Mr. D is attached.